Hello and welcome to this new video course on Curious Byte. Now this video course is going to focus on creating a UI kit. Now a UI kit is essentially the building blocks of a website that you can have within an app or you can import it into the app. And for example in React terms you can build small components and you can basically use them all over your project where and when and it's uh, perfect for any kind of app, any size. Obviously the larger the better, but it means that your project can scale if you've got it. So this will be a multi-video series, uh, one of the biggest that we've ever done on Curious Byte. Um, and we'll take you through how to get set up and then actually employing it in the wild. So stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the video. kit is essentially the building blocks of your application so it's your UI kit components um, it could include your design system essentially all the building blocks to build a website or an app with now the first thing we need to do is we need to decide on the infrastructure one of the core things that we're going to need is storybook now storybook is a way to basically work on your components in isolation. If you build a component in Angular, Vue or React, you can then view it in this uh, application here called Storybook. And it's a really good way of working on parts of your website in isolation. So if you haven't heard of it, I'd certainly check it out, but we will be going through it in this video. Now to build the infrastructure of a UI kit that includes Storybook, that includes React, that preferably includes SAS, uh, among other technologies, uh, we will need some kind of scaffolding or, or infrastructure. So you could use Create React App, or you could use a boilerplate project. In this case, we're going to use a boilerplate project that I've created uh, about a year ago, but I have updated it recently in the last few months which basically includes an updated version of Storybook. It includes a pretty interesting Webpack config. It includes React, but like I said, you can use Angular or Vue. Uh, in this case, we're going to use React because that's what I use day to day and, and it's uh, my preference out of the lot. TypeScript, uh, you don't have to use TypeScript in this project, but uh, we'll be showing you how to use it uh, if you do. Uh, SAS, obviously, and ESLint for keeping good code standards, and GraphQL. A lot of these things you might not need. Uh, the core things that you will need are these and SAS. Now it's really simple. All you need to do is clone the repo, npm install, and then just run the project. And that will run Storybook. If you want to run React, all you need to do is just run start. Um, you don't even need to do run, just npm start, and it should work. Killer Storybook config. I'll put the link of this in the description. Uh, I'd highly recommend just using this to get started. Um, if you want to use your own method of using Create React app, there's plenty of tutorials out there on how to get set up with a, a React template that includes uh, Storybook and TypeScript and SAS. Uh, just to note, that this was written for an article. And if you do want to have a deeper look into this build, uh, this article goes into a bit more detail than I'm going to go into. Um, so that's a, a pretty good read after this video if you want to go and understand uh, what we're using. But let's go and uh, download this. So let's grab this. Uh, obviously, if you've got an SSH key, uh, use SSH, but we'll be using HTTPS. Once we've grabbed that, let's go to our terminal and let's create the folder. So we'll just create a folder called UI kit, change directory into our UI kit. Now you don't have to use a terminal to do this. You could do this manually. Uh, all we're doing is we're creating a directory and we're going into it. But this next part you will need a terminal for. And what we're going to do is we are going to git clone our killer storybook config. And if we put the dot after, after a space, that it will clone the contents of that Git repository into this folder that we're currently in, which is UIKit. And let's have a look to see if that works. And it has, so we can see all of those items in there. So what we now need to do is we just need to install everything. So if we go npm install, and then we want to npm start. And then we can see that this is working. So this is uh, React showing up, uh, showing our one component that we have. Let's also try to run Storybook. Brilliant, and we can see that that's finished. Brilliant, and we can see that the same component that we saw on the React page, it's now here and it's working. So we have our Storybook 
all set up. We have a React all set up um, and we've got SAS, TypeScript and everything. So let's go inspect and just see how it looks uh, in the code itself. So we'll open up so we'll open up our UI kit here in VS Code. And I'll just give you a little run through of what our setup is. So Storybook is all contained within our dot .storybook file here. Uh, this is our config, basic config for Storybook. Um, we're essentially going to be looking for stories.tx, so anything with that prefix. So what we're going to be saying is we're looking within the source folder. We're looking for any files that say dot .stories, and then we're going to run them within our Storybook. This is just some uh, general styling that you can add to your storybook itself. Um, this is the Webpack config we'll be running. Now, Webpack in this project is set up quite interestingly. What we've done is we've got our main Webpack config here. And then we've also got our Webpack rules folder. And this is where essentially all our rules and settings are for the entire project. And what we're saying here is that in here, we want to just import the rules. So here we're bringing in the rules and we're having two webpack configs. So we're having one in the root directory and one in storybook. And this way you can have the same set of rules, but you can have it running anywhere in multiple parts of the site. And it's one way to get around having to share TypeScript and SAS and your variables and just share a lot of the things that you have in your React app. Um, this is why it's sometimes better just to download boilerplate uh, setups if you don't want to go through setting all this up. But I would also recommend to go ahead and do this all yourself. It is, it is a good learning experience. Obviously, your node modules folder, your public folder. So this is your public folder. Uh, you can amend this to however you want. Um, just very basic boilerplate stuff in there. And this is where all your components will live. So we have our entry file here, the index.tsx, and you can see that that is a TypeScript file. So TypeScript and SAS are working out the box. It's your ESLint settings here. So you could amend this to whatever you prefer. Uh, it's got TypeScript settings in here as well. Uh, you've got your components. Um, obviously, we're going to go ahead and tidy this up in just a moment. Uh, you've got your SAS, uh, and I've put some uh, basic styling in here. So you've got your global stylings in here and you don't need to import these in every file the way that this is set up. Uh, you've got your basic variables in here. Uh, we've got a reset style sheet in here that just basically resets the styling on uh, all these basic native elements. And yeah, we've got uh, another reset style sheet as well, which just adds a bit of basic styling. So let's normalize. And then here are some of our core mixins that we're going to be using. We do have uh, some boilerplate stories here, uh, which we can remove once we get in. Uh, our Babel configs, ESLint, uh, and these are, this is our package.json. You can see here are all the commands. Uh, so you can run your GraphQL server here if you want. So if you add a GraphQL server within here, this should run it just fine. Um, this will start your React project. Uh, this will build your React project. Um, so yeah, you can see some basic boilerplate in here. This can all be tidied up because uh, you might not want to use GraphQL. Uh, you might want to get rid of these uh, basic build scripts, um, but we'll, we'll go ahead and refine this later. This is a basic readme. You can change your readme to whatever you want. Uh, and this here is your TypeScript config. Now you might decide that uh, you you want to change it so it's not strict or you want to have different settings for it. So yeah, that's the project. That's what we have. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll just quickly tidy up the components and we'll uh, put in, so that's our basic setup. Now what we're going to do is just go into here and have a look at our first component, uh, which we have called installation success. So we've got our first component here which is called installation success, but we'll create a new component here and we'll call it the button component and we will create some files for it. So we're going to create a basic component that's going to work in our storybook just to show that how it works and how easy it is to set up a component. So we'll create a button.tsx and we'll import 
react from react. We'll just make a basic function component. We'll make it a functional component and I'll just put some text in here. And we want to be able to export this. So I think that's the, the, the basics of this button. And we'll just keep it like this for now. And we'll come back and add some props in a moment. Uh, let's add a new file here. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to reference this button component twice when we're importing it. Um, because if we just left it with the button.tsx, we would have gotten a, a file like this. We would have had to import this file like components slash button slash button, which is just a bit redundant. So what we're about to do now is we're about to change this. So you just have to import it like this. And we do that by exporting default from, we don't even need that in fact. So this is saying we're taking the default from button and we'll export that. So now this index.tsx is essentially exporting this button. So whenever you try to grab this folder, it'll just grab that automatically now through the index.tsx file. Now let's add a SAS file. Now we'll use a lowercase b uh, to denote that this isn't actually a component file. Um, it is just a style sheet for it. So if we go into here and if we go import button.sass and that should grab our SAS file from there. So now that we've imported that, let's add a class name to this. And we'll call it, we'll just call it button for now. Um, let's go here and then let's add that here. We'll add a border of red. Yeah, that should be fine. So we've got the basic styling set up here. Um, let's add a story. So add a, to add a story, it's similar to this. Uh, we need to add a stories folder. And this is just to denote that this is separate from all of this. Um, and then we'll add the actual file that will get read, uh, which will be button.stories.tsx. And if we go here, we can see how we've set it up here. Um, we'll simply just copy and paste, put this into here, and we will change this to button, change that to button as well. And we'll put button down here and we'll save that. So once we've just amended that to this, we can just simply just go to the folder because the default, fo default in file in the folder is exporting button. So we only need to do that. Um, and with that, if we open storybook back up, we should see our button component there. And we should also be able to see our existing component that was there before. And slowly but surely, we'll start to build up our component library and show you all the different techniques involved in creating a proper UI kit. So I hope you enjoyed the first video in the series. In the second video, we'll show you how to set up all your stylings and all the things involved with styling your UI components. So if you found that useful, please do like and subscribe and stay tuned for our second video on styling our UI kit. I've been Harry and this has been Curious Byte.